Good day, Church Fellowship, and welcome to the LJCC update for Wednesday, January the 19th. Well, I hope you got out and enjoyed a really beautiful day yesterday. It was amazing. I don't think anybody enjoyed it more than our dog Sam did. We sat out on the porch yesterday evening a little on the back porch a little while, and boy, he just found a patch of sun and just laid there and just was as happy as he could be. But as you know, things are changing. I hope you are ready for what appears to be some of the coldest temperatures we've had this season. Uh, they say something about frozen precipitation. I'm not believing it, but uh, nonetheless, I hope you're ready to stay warm for a little while as things uh, change. And to a certain extent, it looks like the worst of the COVID spike may actually be um, behind us. Um, not there yet, but it, it, it's pointing in that direction. And I, I hope you'll join me in your prayers that this latest spike is truly uh, kind of reducing rather than uh, continuing to, to persist. So let's be praying about that. Mostly reminders this week, so let's just get to it real quick. As you know, January, ha our mission emphasis has been Hope Habitat for Humanity. Uh, and we're looking forward to this Sunday, hope that you can be there, looking forward to this Sunday in the Fellowship Center uh, combined class with uh, the, the Help for Habitat uh, directors, former uh, the, the exiting director and the new director that's coming in to hear about the great work that's going on there and also to be reminded how we can be involved in that. The Wilsons were here for some job hunting for Nicole and some house hunting for the family. Uh, next time we see them, it will be part of the, they'll be part of our staff. And I, I really ask that you continue praying for their transition to this new place, and and of course praying about how we together are going to have a new uh, new door to open into ministry uh, with the addition of Wes and his family and. Uh, the things that God brings to us through them, and the things that we can bring to their family as well. Remember that you need to continue checking the website and our Facebook page for updates. Uh, although we don't necessarily have anything new report today as far as changes to our schedule, um, the infernu information that about precautionary cancellations or postponements, and when we start rescheduling things, uh, you'll be able to pick that up as fast as the decisions are made uh, there on the website or, again, on the Facebook page. Really appreciate the way Jamie Gay and Dara Frazier keep both those uh, communication avenues open and running for you. Please be sure, and again, I've been reminding the, you of this because we have had a couple of changes recently, and, and again, probably the first line of being able to hear what has changed uh, is going to be making sure that you're part of our text messaging system. And again, if you're not receiving probably one or two texts from the church, uh, you need to call the office and we need to be sure that you're getting the latest and best information. So uh, things that are coming up, I'm fairly certain that you're aware that there's no Cafe Munch, Bread of Life, new name for Bread of Life tonight. Uh, pretty confident, it sounds like that we feel like Again, the numbers are kind of moving in a better direction such that we can restart Cafe Munch next week. So already get ready for that, that great time of food and fellowship. But tonight our regular Bible classes are going on, uh, including children's classes for all ages, our youth group meets on Wednesday night. Uh, Gary McBrayer is teaching a class right here in this classroom behind me for in the Gospel of Luke. There's a singing class in the Fellowship Center with David Gay and Randy Moore. And last but not least, maybe the, the highlight of our Wednesday nights are two different ladies' classes that are going on. If you'll just down, head down A Hall, you'll see both of them, and, and you can be blessed by what's going on in either one of those. So uh, hope to see you tonight as part of our Wednesday night Bible classes. I uh, want to be sure that you're checking in with the life group leaders, whether or not you started last Sunday. Again, the, the opportunity to, to check in with the leaders and see what the plan is for the next few weeks. You can always, if you're not involved in that really wonderful, wonderful ministry of, of blessing, the, you can find a group on our website and, and join in that great blessing. 
including you can join us. Uh, Sharon and I lead a life group on Thursday evenings uh, that uh, really is a great, has been a great blessing to us over the last couple of years. We mostly meet on Zoom. We have about several young families and it's much easier for them uh, to keep the kids at home and not have the driving there and driving back kind of time to be involved with. Uh, so we mostly meet in Zoom, but occasionally uh, have in-person fellowship and we enjoy those times as well. Also want to be sure and remind you that Wednesday, February the 2nd, that's now two weeks away in the Fellowship Center, will be our first ministry coordinating coordination meeting of this year focusing on our budget development ministry potential discovery. And again, as you know, all are welcome. Let's move on to our prayer list. We've got some Thanksgivings we want to mention here. We're going to lead that off with Ty Lewis. This is the Patterson's grandson who was involved in an accident. He was on his longboard and, and, and a vehicle hit him out in California back in December. He is now, uh, not, I wouldn't say completely recovered, but recovered enough to be back at work, and we're really thankful for that good news. Galen Davis, Joe McShann's cousin, who continues in Herman Memorial in the medical center with severe head trauma from a car accident back early in December, is now, we want to give thanks to God, is now up and about and walking. Wow. And uh, we're really thankful. Still a long ways to go, but we want to join in the thanksgiving over the good things that are going on. Also want to join in together and thank, be giving thanks to God for Edna Allen. This is Jamie Gay's uh, aunt. Uh, who had knee replacement surgery back in December. She is doing better and is making progress with her therapy. And, and those were some of the major concerns when she had that surgery at, at her age and this stage in life. And so we're really thankful to hear that. I think I heard that she even got a permanent this week, so she must be feeling really good. We continue with our Thanksgivings. Uh, Vicki Kamlowski, this is a friend of Joyce and Bill Lewis's from West Virginia. Uh, we've been praying for her some all the way back in July. Uh, she was diagnosed with colon cancer and just had some struggles with that. Uh, we are getting reports now that the doctors believe that the surgery that took place back in early August got all of the cancer. The blood work is looking better all the time and she is doing well. So we're really thankful for Vicki's continued recovery and God's healing of her body. We're thankful that we can report uh, COVID recoveries from folks like Amanda Valise, Kelly McBrayer, Randy and Sandy Moore, Chad and Gretchen Abney, Ann Nesbitt, Gary and Corliss Hicks, Max Simmons, and uh, Bob Aubrey, who let us know that he had COVID all the way back at the beginning of the year. Also, our granddaughter, uh, Callie Creed, out in San Angelo, uh, had came home Monday um, from school uh, with uh, with COVID uh, last week, and she's doing much better now, and we're really thankful for that. Also, of course, Mary Cronk. Uh, this is Paula Roper's daughter, who continues to improve in the Abilene area. We do have some new COVID cases to report, and uh, we're thankful that at this point, none of these, or only one of these, are folks that have had to go to the hospital for treatment. First of all, the Haragis. Um, Rudy, Capri, and little baby Carson all were down with COVID earlier this week, all tested positive. Uh, little Carson ran fever Monday and Tuesday, but seems to be on the mend today. Symptoms are better, uh, but it was a scary time, as you can imagine, for mom and dad. So let's lift up the Haragis in our prayer. Mary York, this is Randy York's mother, has been po tested positive for COVID. Tina Lovett, we mentioned her last week. We don't have any updates, so we want to continue to pray for this friend of the Krebs box who was admitted to ICU last week with uh, COVID. Also, Beth Pan has let us know that her daughter, Alyssa, who lives up in Colorado Springs, uh, sorry, in the Denver area, is doing better, but uh, still is not uh, out of quarantine. And we haven't gotten an update on Robin and Terry Loftus, but I'm betting that they're doing better as well. Turning to other prayer needs that we have, uh, Sherry Nuckin let us know that Ralph was admitted to UTMB Galveston with cardiac issues. Uh, please, please uh, contact Sherry. Uh, if you could possibly help with the care of Oraline while she's having to go back and forth and help with her dad over in Galveston uh, and be praying for Ralph as, as there does seem to be some blockage that's going to need to be taken care of. 
We're continuing to pray for Martha Krebsbach. This is the daughter of Mike and Carol who was laid off back in December. She's looking for a new engineering job and we want to pray that the right one opens up on that she can be fulfilled and also be again a great witness for the kingdom wherever she goes. Misty Wilson let us know that she had day surgery last Thursday. She is home and recovering well. Still some soreness going on, and so we want to continue to remember in her prayer. She has a post-op follow-up tomorrow, so let's be praying that she gets good news there as well. This morning, Pat Allen, this is Jamie Gay's mother, woke up uh, with very low blood pressure and some dizziness associated with that. Uh, headed to the doctor, doesn't seem to be anything too major as it, they're attributing it to some uh, overactive thyroid activity at this point. She is back home now and resting, but we want to be praying for Pat Allen. Ann Rhodes is a friend of Megan Krebsbach in uh, Oklahoma City, uh, who is currently in ICU up there. Uh, after experiencing a seizure activity and the, some stroke activity even in the midst of a pregnancy. So uh, the Crows Box and, and are worried about her and Megan has asked for us to join with them in prayer for her. Also, Ryan Arthur has let us know that his mother, Dana Arthur, was admitted to the hospital, and this is last week, in Beaumont uh, She with some arterial blockage. She had a procedure on Monday, and Ryan reports that it went well. We're thankful for that. Gary Andres is a friend of Mike Patterson's. We prayed for Mike, asked us to pray for him back in December as well. Uh, has abdominal cancer and is undergoing chemotherapy, so we need to keep him in our prayers. But we're thankful that he's been able to be back at work with Mike at Habitat for Humanity. Uh, let's, but let's keep Gary in our prayers as he continues through that chemotherapy. Jay Plunkett, Joe McShann's uncle from Baton Rouge, has started chemotherapy for his lung cancer, and he asked for our prayers as well. And then, of course, our friend, uh, friend Facebook friend of Vic Leon's, Reagan Okuth from uh, Kisumu, uh, Kenya, continues to ask for our prayers for his life in Christ and, and it's always his physical circumstances as well. Meg Scott let us know that her nephew, Clayton Yeager, broke his arm. Uh, some sort of accident, it looks like, and is needing surgery to repair it. Let's keep Clayton in our prayers. And uh, last week, in fact, several weeks, I've been asking you to pray for my cousin, Anthony Tolliver. Uh, he continues to struggle with uh, various health issues. Uh, right now, there's an infection in the bone, which is down in his foot, but... Uh, trying to come up his leg. He's undergoing some pretty heavy-duty antibiotics. He was moved to Kindred Hospital uh, first of this week for better follow-up and therapy, that Kindred Hospital in Clear Lake. And so I would appreciate your prayers for Anthony as well. We want to continue to pray for those that we're aware of um, that have not already been mentioned who are battling cancer, and that includes Salvador Aguirre and Rich Hardiger, Ernie Smith, Penny Weckerly, Joe Bryant, Naomi Crumrine, Vicki Johnson, Nina Voigt, Rick King, LaVonda Potts, Chepo San Miguel, Ben Lascano, Danny Bice, Dee Rambo, and Maria Vargas. We've got some birthdays coming up uh, this week. Uh, tomorrow, Thursday, uh, big day. We have Vicki Garrett, Chloe Baker, happy birthday, Chloe, and uh, Dara Frazier, our, our own Dara Frazier, works in the office with us, is celebrating tomorrow. Uh, unfortunately, she's going to have to be at work. What a drag. This Sunday, uh, we'll need to be sure and speak to Will Ammons. January 23rd is his birthday. Danny Young, uh, next Tuesday, January 25th, will be celebrating her birthday. And a couple of anniversaries to mention as well. Both on uh, tomorrow, the 20th, Chewy and Sylvia Haro, and Ryan and Laura Arthur. So let's be sure and reach out to them and say congratulations. Well, as we close out today, I would ask for you to join me in prayer. Our Father and our God, we, we thank you for being a good God. We thank you for uh, being involved in our lives in such a present way. We want to uh, give you praise for um, being one, a God who is not so distant, but is involved in our lives every day. And here's our prayers. 
Father, we are thankful for these folks that are having birthdays and for our anniversaries that are coming up. Thank you for the way those people bless our lives and, again, for the way their lives are a witness and testimony to us. We are thankful that Ty Lewis is able to be back at work and we would pray that his healing would be complete. We are thankful that Galen Davis is experiencing improvement, able to stand up and pray that that healing process continues forward. Father, we uh, want to pray for, we're thankful that Edna Allen is, therapy is going better and better and we would pray that she would continue to persevere through that work. Father, we're thankful to hear the great news that Vicki Kamlowski's doctors say that all the cancer is gone, and we pray that, that that diagnosis continues. And Father, we're thankful for all those we mentioned earlier that have recovered from COVID, and we pray that um, all those who are experiencing struggles will uh, have very few symptoms and be able to recover clearly. Father, we have these that we want to lift up to you at this time. We lift up Ralph knocking to you and the stuff going on with his heart and having to be all the way over there in Galveston. We, we lift up Sherry as she cares for both her mom and her dad and pray for the ways that we might be able to be of help to her in her care for Oraline. Father, we're thankful that Misty Wilson's surgery went well and we pray that her recovery will be complete. Father, we, we're thankful to hear that Pat Allen's uh, blood pressure issues were um, at, at least as minimal as possible. We pray that she's home resting and that that rest will be uh, recreated for her. Father, we're uh, lifting up Ann Rhodes. Uh, pregnancy's tough anyway, but these are incredible complications and we pray for those who are caring for her and we ask for your healing touch not only for her but for the baby in her womb father we're thankful that dana arthur's heart procedure went well we pray that she'll continue to recover and and uh, that she can be back to her usual activities soon and found, father we also uh, hold up Clayton Yeager to you and this broken arm and the complications there. And we pray that you would open a door and pave a way for that arm to be properly healed. Father, we continue to remember Martha Krebsbach, and Leanne McDaniel and Johnine Phillips and Mary Bob Henderling. We want to continue to lift up to you Wanda Long and Lindley Glover and Ronnie Mullins and Lisbeth Warnke and Clyde and Janice Stewart and Kathy Lee Davis, Cindy Yates. Father, we hold up to you and continue to remember Tiffany Baker and Zane Lee, Nell Brown, Nora and Ron, Ron and Nora McDaniel, Paula Roper, Charlie and Candy Crest, Sandra Mullins, Meg Scott, Nicole Swanson, D. Rambo, Joanne Roots, April Barton, Barbara Greenway, and Jim and Judy Carl. Father, we hold up Cheryl Sanchez to you. We hold up Anthony Tolliver and his wife Lisa to you. We want to hold up John Hunt and Jennifer Jimenez, Panchito and Jennifer Jimenez, um, Iola Moore, Dave Newberry, Carolyn Hunter, and little Allie Wade. Father, we, we continue to hold up to you those we mentioned earlier who are battling cancer. We want to pray for these who are struggling with COVID symptoms as we speak, for Rudy Capri and baby Carson Haragi. We hold up Mary York, we hold up Tina Lovett and Alyssa Pan, Robin and Terry Loftus, and Mary Cronk. Father, we, we want to pray for our, our ministry potential discernment process that's going on right now in our congregation and pray that we will all uh, engage with you and how we can be the cheerful givers that you want us to be and that our hearts will be motivated to, to support the ministries of these church. Father, we're thankful for the work of Habitat for Humanity, and we look forward to the class and hearing more about it this Sunday. Pray that uh, lots of folks will come and want to hear those good things. Father, we continue to pray for Rhonda and Frandy Pierce in Haiti, and we pray for Frandy's visa application, and that can be expedited as well as possible. Father, we continue to pray for President Biden, Governor Abbott, all those who lead in our government, that you and, and the U.S., the Supreme Court, that you would uh, open their eyes to your wisdom and that they would turn to you for their understanding of what is right and what is just. 
Father, we continue to hold up our teachers and our health care workers, police and fire and EMS, and, and of course our military. Father, I want to hold up our elders as we continue in this time of kind of uncertainty with this spike in COVID. I want to pray not only for their immediate decisions surrounding that, but I want to pray for them as they continue to, to, to lead this congregation, chart out uh, where we're going and how we're going to be about your mission in this place in this time. Father, we continue to remember the families of Noah Casey and Olaf Brerin and Gretchen's father as they continue to mourn the loss. And Father, um, we are so excited about the Wilsons being here, Wes, Nicole, Bria, and Beckett. Uh, we're thankful for the way you're, you are opening doors, and we pray that you continue to open the doors so that that transition can be as smooth as possible. And Father, we want to pray that you'll prepare us for the way they're going to impact the ministry in this church and the way, again, that we can be kingdom in this time, in this place, particularly for our youth and those families. Uh, and the, the, the great things that you want to do through their lives and that ministry. Again, Father, we thank you for hearing our prayers. I want to thank you for the Lake Jackson Church of Christ, for these people who are so generous and so caring and so motivated, again, to be your witnesses and your disciples in this time and place. I pray that you would open doors for each of us uh, to be your blessing in other people's lives and particularly to be a witness in this broken and struggling world. We lift these prayers to you. Thankful that you hear them. Thankful that you care. Thankful for Jesus above all else. And it's in his name that we pray and we all say amen and amen. Well, thanks very much for joining us today. Uh, we have another great uh, Sunday coming up this week. And I want to encourage you to, if you feel safe in doing so, again, uh, if you need to wear the red lanyard to let people know to kind of give you a little more space, that's fine. But we hope that you'll be here. If you can't or don't feel safe doing that, Please watch the live stream, join us. And I just really want to encourage you to be prepared, have your elements ready so that you can uh, not only sing along with us and pray along with us and uh, enjoy, I'm sure you enjoy the preaching with us, uh, but that you can celebrate the Lord's Supper with us wherever you are, that you can be part of that. As always, thank you very much for watching today. I pray that you continue to stay well and that you're constantly reminded of all the opportunities that God is putting in front of you to be his light and salt around us. You make a difference in this world, and I don't want you to forget it. Again, thanks for watching. Bye for now.